Hello again, everyone. This is Joe Hinches with Beyond the Chart, and this is technical analysis of the stock market today. Today is Monday, December 15th. We're going to take a quick look at the market action today and then look at Apple, Twitter, and Facebook. Okay, starting off here with the Dow. The Dow was down 100 points today, so we're continuing the market slide from, uh, get rid of that. Not sure why it's doing that. Okay, continuing the market slide from Friday. Uh, you know, it uh, did not have nearly the range that we had on Friday, but it was, you know, we, we did try to rally early in the morning. It opened, rallied, and then sold it on and off. So the range, high to low, what was the... Yeah, almost a 300 point range on the day. Uh, and then just stayed to the downside, mostly to the downside um, uh, for the day. Let's take a look. Now, you know, and again, where are we? We're trading below the 55 day moving average. You've got the, 20, the 10 crossing below the 21 pretty distinctly, pretty clearly. Uh, so will it be interesting to see what kind of follow through we get with this? Uh, the next thing, the S&P 500, a similar type scenario. And one of the things I talked about, I didn't talk about on the weekend, is this broadening top that still, I think, has the potential to be playing out here. Uh, you know, this, this is not an Elliott wave formation. This is a traditional technical analysis chart formation, chart pattern, a broadening top. And it looks like we're getting a little bit of a throwover. We had this throwover, let's put it that way. We had it. Now we're pulling back down into into the uh, into the pattern. So again, the pattern is not considered complete or the top end until trading goes below this point right here. All right, S and P 500, Nasdaq. The Nasdaq is not nearly as far as the S and P and the Dow in terms of being below the 55-day moving average yet, uh, but we're clearly getting a moving average cross in here. Uh, so the short-term you know, trend is crossing over. Now, you know, sometimes it'll do this, catch itself in here and then rally. I mean, we're just going to have to watch and see. I mean, you know, you just got to keep, uh, you know, watching the, uh, the price action and see what it does. The New York Composite, on the other hand, remember we talked about how, how much weaker this is than the Dow and the uh, S&P and the NASDAQ? We're well below the 233-day moving average and the 55. So we're well below down here, substantially weaker. And of course, this never got to a higher high and we've got the crossover. So, I mean, this is just a little bit in free fall mode here with the New York Composite. Russell 2000, we talked about how we broke below support in here uh, on Friday. And then what did we do? We got a little bounce first thing this morning and then tremendous fall through on down. Now, again, this is uh, this one's got the 55 below the 233, so the longer term uh, trend is to the downside here because of the 55 being below the 233. Uh, now you've got the short term trend breaking back down to the downside. So we're, uh, I mean, this sure looks like a top topping type formation that's being put in here. Uh, let's take a look at the short-term trading index. We'll, we'll, well, let's just stick with our sequence here. We uh, came back down into the middle range here, 1.37 on the close. I uh, got the moving average back down in here. You know, again, a lot of times what we're looking for in, on this extreme is, is uh, a cluster of two out of three days or three out of four days up at extreme readings. Uh, I know that once we get above this 1.5, we're kind of like, you know, in alert zone, but this didn't do anything to us this time. So, you know, and as I mentioned, this kind of make may, maybe a break in the ice that says, okay, you know, we haven't had a move like this in a long, long time. And so maybe this is saying uh, we're, we're, we're starting to break that way and we're going to get more of those types of extreme readings. We're just going to have to watch and see. Let's take a look at the VIX. The VIX, uh, huge swing to the upside again today, and then came all the way down. Wild swinging today, and we're you know kind of not quite in the middle, but still seem to be in a little bit of an uptrend here. Although this was a big outside swinging day, uh, but it's it's still a part of you know it looks to me like it's part of a move to the to the uh, to the high side. 
and uh, let's see high low high low continued down we had a net minus 333 more new lows than new highs so we continue to push down here we're not nearly at the extreme that we got back in October not yet anyway and uh, the the high yield fund which you know everybody's talking about this and you know clearly we've been monitoring it we've been talking about it you know and noted when we got the crossover back here the moving averages crossed and uh, how many days after that cross remember I was talking about that when the market peaked how many days after that and uh, and now it just kept this just kept selling off it's you know it's just again this is in free fall now this this particular bar looks like buying tried to come in it looks like the bulls tried to come in because you know it looks like the bears were winning early the bulls won late here on the, on the um, high yield fund so you know but it's happened before and it wasn't sustainable so uh, sometimes you'll get it now this is definitely kind of a um, a bullish reversal type bar right here uh, but this is not uh, again this is dark this is white now nah, I don't want to get into all the candlestick things because I don't I mean I, I know just enough to be dangerous on on the candlestick stuff <laughs> all right Let's uh, let's look at uh, tonight. Uh, Apple, Facebook, and Twitter. Okay, Apple's pulling back. We talked about this. How I thought we had three intermediate waves up. Now completed the third intermediate wave is completed to the high side. We completed the fifth wave, minor wave within there. Now it's pulling back. And once we've got this third wave up here, and we have wave one here, I'm drawing a trend line, creating a parallel line to that coming back to number two and I'm saying I'm looking for potential number four the fourth wave pullback to get come down here to this trend line and it just it's really interesting that that puts it right in sync with where I thought all along that it might go because here's a gap an open gap right in the middle of this fourth minor wave of the previous of the previous wave okay so this would be a perfect pullback zone for Apple to come back down to 100 and right now, honestly, I mean, you got the moving averages crossed. Short term trend is moving over to the downside. You got nothing but trading down below the 10 day moving average. It, you know, it looks negative. You know, my mistake was I should have gone short right up here when it broke, broke uh, the lows of these bars right in here. That's when I should have gone short on Apple. And I didn't. All right. Uh, Facebook. Facebook is really just chopping sideways okay after this peak it's doing nothing but chopping sideways in here it's really tempted to get bullish i just don't trust it especially in this market environment we got a little bit of a reversal selling off here and uh you know again corrective waves are overlapping waves all right so this looks very corrective to me in terms of after you you draw a little trend line down below it in here that's a potential uh, breakdown zone to me uh, of getting a, a a real thrust to the downside but again let's see it start to close below the blue line and start to roll over and hasn't done that yet and you know and actually I mean this little move in here has been fairly solid given what the market's been doing I mean you can't you can't fault what Facebook's doing I mean granted it's overlapping and correcting sideways but it's not it's not uh, going in the tank right now uh, so let's see the last one is Twitter uh, Twitter continuing to trend to the downside this looks like a little pennant uh, pattern to me uh, and you know we've got the continued breakdown that we got in here uh, the moving averages are all aligned to the downside well actually we don't have the 55 below the 233 yet oh man doggone it we this is a we got this as 200 which every once in a while for some reason some of these old patterns there we go and that should be 55 yes all right so i thought that was a little strange and 21 okay so here we go 21 below the 55 below the 233 and the 10 exponential moving average okay so they're all aligned to the downside. The trend is solidly down. We've got a little fl a pennant formation in here. It sure looks like it wants to continue to move to the downside. All right, those are the three stocks for tonight. We're going to keep this at about 10 minutes. And uh, 
Uh, please share the video. You know, if every one of you guys would just share this on Twitter or on Facebook, uh, it would be wonderful because it would just, you know, generate tremendous circulation. I caution you about email uh, because sometimes when you forward it to a friend via email, if it goes into their spam box or something like that, their spam file, the email, my email provider detects that something just went into a spam file and therefore that gets tagged back to the person who sent it and you get unsubscribed because it looks like you put some, you put the message into spam. Okay, so this is just a heads up. Uh, I'd love for you guys to, you know, to forward the, the videos out to your friends and that type of thing, but I think the best way to do that is to tweet it, put it on Facebook or some other social media, uh, and, uh, you know, we'll go from there. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe, and, uh, you know, it gives you access to the Trade Ideas webpage. And uh, you get notification when I do put posts out and you can download the free PDF I've got for you. All right, this has been Joe for Beyond the Chart. We'll be back Wednesday night. Have a great Tuesday, Wednesday. We'll see what happens here in the markets. I know the Russian, uh, Russia, they, Russia just raised their interest rates from 10.5% to 17% effective tomorrow. That's going to be real interesting. All right, have a great Tuesday, everyone.